Hi class, in chapter 15 we will be looking at collecting and displaying data. In lesson 15.1 we will be designing statistical questions. Learning targets for today we will learn about statistical questions, recognize stat questions and anticipate variability in data related to the question design stat questions that can be answered by a given set of data, and differentiate between surveys and experiments. Quite a few key terms in 15.1, so make sure that you are paying attention when you come across those in the video lesson. Let's take a look at problem one at the top of page 998. It tells us that data are the facts or numbers that describe the results of an experiment or survey. Data are usually collected from a statistical question. A statistical question is a question about a population or a sample. A population is an entire set of items from which data can be collected. A sample is a selection from a population. Let's analyze each of the students' questions that are shown in the example. Bianca says, am I part of a club? And Rajan says, what clubs do you think interest your classmates? Do you think these same clubs interest students in other grades or schools? Bianca's question is not a stat question. Bianca knows whether or not she is part of a club. Also, this question is not asked of a population. It is just asked of Bianca. Rajan's questions are stat questions because he does not know the answers to these questions. Also, these questions can be asked of a population or a sample. Asking stat questions and collecting, organizing, and analyzing data to answer those questions is called data analysis. Through data analysis, you can determine the parameter or statistic from the data. A parameter is the characteristic of a population, and a statistic is the characteristic of a sample. Let's move over to problem two on page 1001 and talk about surveys and experiments. Up at the top of the page it says, when you ask your classmates which clubs they were interested in, you were collecting data. We skipped that portion of problem one, so you can disregard that. All we're going to worry about uh, are surveys and experiments now moving forward. A survey is one method of collecting information about a certain group of people by asking them a statistical question or a set of statistical questions. So let's consider the topic of school lunches. You can ask many stat questions that can be answered by a survey. For example, what is the most popular lunch served at our school? Now remember, good statistical questions are questions about a population or a sample, and we do not know the answers to these questions. So if we look at number one, let's write two additional, two additional stat questions that could be answered by conducting a survey about school lunches. Go ahead and do that uh, with your group members right now. Here are a couple of examples of stat questions that you could have written down. Which lunch do sixth graders prefer? Do boys or girls like pizza for lunch more? and how many students maybe eat vegetarian meals. So those are good stat questions that you could ask about school lunches. Again, because they're asked of a population and because we don't know the answers to these questions. Whenever you have a question and you collect the data to answer it by performing a test for which you decide the conditions, you are performing an experiment. Experiments test something to determine a specific result. Experiments have been a staple of discovering scientific results. Experiments have answered numerous questions scientists have asked, such as how many types of spiders build webs, or how many fish do dolphins eat per day. So if we take a look at number two and number three, based off of those questions, explain why each of these questions is a stat question and then write two or three stat questions that you can answer through conducting an experiment and this can be any kind of topic that you want to choose so write two or three stat questions that you can answer through conducting an experiment 
If we take a look at number two, each of those questions is a stat question because the answers can be determined from an experiment of a sample or a population. And again, we don't know what the answer is to those questions without doing those experiments from the population. If we take a look at number three, again, you were coming up with two or three of your own stat questions, any kind of topic that you wanted. Here are a couple of examples. Uh, which middle school in your city recycles the most pounds of paper in a month? Do sixth graders or seventh graders recycle more plastic bottles in a week? And how many pounds of aluminum cans are recycled each week at the recycling center? Let's look at the talk the talk activity on page 1002. They ask us to, or they tell us to determine if each question shown is a stat question. If it is not, explain why it is not a stat question and then rewrite it to make it a stat question. So go ahead and do number one through number five for the talk the talk activity. Number one asks us, how tall are you to the nearest inch? This would not be a stat question because you already know the answer. How tall is the average sixth grader to the nearest inch would be a better way to write that as a stat question because we are asking a population and we don't know the answer to the question. Number two says about how many text messages do sixth graders send each day. This would be a good example of a stat question. Number three, what is your school mascot? This is not a stat question again because you already know the answer. A better stat question would be which type of animal is the most popular for a school mascot. Number four, do boys or girls spend more time playing video games? That is a good example of a stat question. And number five, how many students bring their lunch in reusable bags? That is also an example of a good stat question. Again, because it will be asked of a population and we don't know the answer unless the experiment is done. We are going to combine Lesson 15.2 along with 15.1 today because we are only going to be focusing on one part of 15.2 uh, as far as certain types of data are concerned. The learning target in 15.2, we will discuss the different types of data that can be delect, uh, collected, displayed, and analyzed. And from the key terms list, the four words that you want to focus on are categorical, quantitative, discrete, and continuous data, which we will see in problem one for 15.2. To start off in problem number one, we want to first take a look at each question that is listed and complete the survey. After we are done doing that, we want to look at the differences then that you notice in the types of answers that you recorded for the different questions. So go ahead and do number one and number two based off of the questions shown. If we take a look at number two, everyone's answers are obviously going to vary based off of the questions that were asked. But hopefully you notice that some of the answers that you had to write in were numbers while other answers were in words. Some answers came from picking out of a selection from the group of choices that were offered. When you are collecting, displaying, and analyzing data, the data are one of two types, either categorical or quantitative. Categorical data are data for which each piece of data fits exactly fits into exactly one of several different groups or categories. Categorical data are also called qualitative data. Quantitative data are data for which each piece of data can be placed on a numerical scale. Quantitative data are also called numerical data. When quantitative data are a count of how many, the data can be described as discrete data. Discrete data can only have values that are counting numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. When quantitative data are a measurement of something and can have values that are between two counting numbers, then the data is called continuous data. 
Let's take a look at number 3 at the top of page 1005, and now that we have an understanding of the different types of data, we want to determine whether each of the data collected are an example of categorical or quantitative. So go ahead and answer letters A through F for number 3. For letter A, our height is going to be quantitative, B, hair color is categorical, C, carry a cell phone is categorical, D, number of text messages is quantitative, E, time you spend exercising is quantitative, and F, favorite type of TV show is categorical. Remember, when we're looking at categorical data, we are going to be putting our data into a different group or category, and when we look at quantitative data, we are going to be looking at a numerical scale. That is going to be it for Lesson 15.1 and 15.2 on collecting uh, data. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.